What's up you guys, Keith Demel here. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to break down the various pilot licenses in Canada. By the end of this video, you're going to know what the first license you have to get, what's the last license you have to get, and everything else in between. So the first thing on your pilot journey that you have to get is what's known as a student pilot permit. This is not technically a license, it's a permit that allows you to fly solo for the first time. In order to get the student pilot permit, you need to be a minimum of 14 years of age. That's right, you only need to be 14 years old to go for a solo. All you're doing is just showing your instructor that you have a basic level of knowledge in order to fly the airplane safely on your own. So in order to obtain a student pilot permit, you must pass an exam known as the P-STAR exam, also known as the Pre-Solo Test of Air Regulation. In order to study for this exam, you have to memorize a question bank of 200 questions and then write this exam. If you click the link in the description, I have my own version of the P-STAR exam that's the most up-to-date and current, and it's 100% free, so I recommend you check it out. The next type of permit you can get is known as your recreational pilot permit, also known as rec permit. Uh, this is an optional permit. Not many people do it, but if you want, you can get this permit. Again, it's not a license. And some of the limitations of a rec permit is that you can only fly during the day, you can only fly within Canada, and uh, you can only fly up to one passenger at a time. So it's quite limiting. If you want to take your entire family flying, you cannot do so. It's only one passenger at a time. Some of the requirements for this permit, I'm going to post it up here. Now let's look at the first real license that you can get as a pilot in Canada, and that is your private pilot's license. This is the most common license that people start off with in Canada. Finally, as a private pilot, you can fly with more than one passenger in your airplane. Uh, so if the airplane has four seats, you can mm -hmm. fill up all those seats with passengers and you'll have no problem flying legally. But the only downside is that as a private pilot, you are limited to flying during the daytime only, and you cannot fly for higher reward. So it must be strictly for pleasure purposes only. It's a very exciting license and I remember when I first got my pilot pass license, I took all my friends flying. Uh, we would do lots of tours around the CN Tower, tours over Niagara Falls, and I did that for a long time to build experience. It was a lot of fun. And here I'll post some of the requirements of being a private pilot. The next step in your pilot journey is what's known as a night rating. A rating is not a license. You can think of ratings as things you add on on top of your license as a supplement. That's the way you can think of ratings. It's just an add-on to your existing a license. So a night rating is the first time now you are able to fly at night. Because remember, all the other licenses before, we were only limited to the day. But now we're actually allowed to fly at night. All right, here's another exciting license. The next license you can get after your night rating is known as the commercial pilot's license. Finally, with a commercial pilot's license, you can get paid to fly for a living. Some of the privileges of a commercial pilot license is one, you can work as a professional pilot, you can work as a co-pilot captain on an aircraft that only requires one pilot, and you can also exercise the privileges of the previous license, which is the private pilot's license. To get your commercial pilot's license, the training is quite intensive. As you can imagine, you know, they want you to have a much higher standard when you can fly professionally as a pilot. So here are some of the requirements. Just because you have a commercial license, your experience doesn't stop there. You actually need much more add-on ratings on top of this in order to be fully qualified to apply for a job. So the next rating we're going to look at is the multi-engine rating. And you probably guessed it, a multi-engine rating is so that you're able to fly an aircraft with multiple engines. It could be two, three, or four engines that's out there. In order to have your multi-engine rating, you need to have a much higher knowledge and experience level than before. With all our licenses before, we were only restricted to flying aircraft with one engine but now because we can fly multiple engines we actually have more options available to us but also comes at the cost of more complexity and you need to be able to handle it to me this is one of the easiest ratings out there i mean most people are able to get this multi-engine rating in just under 10 hours the next rating which is going to be an add-on onto your commercial pilot's license is known as the instrument rating this rating is very very important because it allows you to fly under instrument conditions basically you're going to be flying in the clouds from 
from point A to point B without looking out the window and arrive on the other end safely and even conduct an approach and landing at the destination safely all without looking out the window. Up to this point all the other licenses and ratings we were either looking outside uh, or we had to be below the clouds but for an instrument rating you're allowed to fly through the clouds all the way. And I personally have my own INRAT exam course you can check it out again in the link it's a very successful course and I've helped over 50 people pass this exam as of making this video so I recommend you check it out. Once you meet all those requirements you must once again complete a flight test with an examiner and once you pass you will get your instrument rating. The next type of rating is quite a fun rating and that's known as a seaplane rating also known as a float plane rating. It's something that's a lot of fun and I might actually consider doing this in the future. With this type of rating you can add it on to either the commercial or the private pilot's license. Basically with the seaplane rating you can fly an aircraft on floats on water. The next rating is your instructor rating. This is an optional rating and it's something that I personally did in order to build flying experience and something that you can do to build experience very quickly and stay closer to home. This flight instructor rating is actually broken down into four different types of flight instructor ratings. We'll look at it in a second. But basically as a flight instructor you are now responsible to teach other students how to fly an airplane. It comes with a lot of responsibility. And to be honest it's not for everyone. Unless you are a people person and you like teaching do not become a flight instructor because you'll be doing yourself a disservice because you'll hate the job and you'll be doing your students a disservice. So I recommend only doing the flight instructor rating unless you absolutely think you'll enjoy it. Now as I said earlier the flight instructor rating is broken further down into four different types of flight instructor ratings. At the very basic level the entry level flight instructor as you start off with is known as a class 4 instructor. The class 4 instructor is basically your license to learn how to teach. You're a student yourself, you just finished flight school and you're teaching other students how to fly. But there are some downsides to being a class 4 instructor such as that you're being constantly supervised by a higher level of instructor. If you're a class 4 instructor I recommend you break out of this as soon as possible and move to the next level of instructor rating which is known as a class 3 flight instructor rating. In order to move on to the class 3 flight instructor rating there is no formal flight test but you must show some competence that you are a good instructor. The next flight instructor rating that's another higher level is known as a class 2 flight instructor rating. With this type of flight instructor rating you are allowed to be a CFI also known as a chief flying instructor of a flight school. And the final type of instructor rating is the class 1 instructor. With this type of instructor rating you have the privilege of teaching other pilots to become instructors. So as a class 1 you can now train student pilots to become class 4 instructors and you can also teach ground school as well. Alright so let's say that you either worked as an instructor for a short period of time and now you're wanting to move on to a bigger company that flies turbine aircraft or you do not want to do your flight instructor rating and you want to go directly to flying one of those aircraft up north. In order to do so a lot of companies require that you have this specific exam which is known as the IATRA exam. It's a really weird exam name and I don't know why Transport Canada calls it this name. Basically with this type of exam allows you to fly an aircraft that is a high performance aircraft requiring two pilots or more. Think of it as an in-between exam between your commercial pilot license and your airline transport pilot license which we'll talk about later. So this exam tries to bridge the knowledge gap in between these two licenses to ensure that you're safe to fly an aircraft with passengers. Again I have my own version of the IATRA exam which is a very successful exam in Canada and as of making this video I've had over 70 people pass this exam. So do check out the exam in the links below. In order to write this exam in the first place you must have a minimum of 250 hours of total flight time. So a lot of flight schools when you finish flight training you finish with about 200 to 210 hours. Unfortunately you cannot write this exam unless you have a minimum of 250 hours. You must also ensure that you get 70% on this exam and for a lot of people it's quite a tough exam so ensure that you prepare really well, you practice really well with all the practice tests. You can check out my course if you'd like and I want you to pass on the first try. And finally the moment you've been waiting for your entire career and this is your airline transport pilot license. To get this license it's a huge huge achievement. It takes a lot of work just to get to a thousand hours and a lot more work to pass these exams and get this airline transfer pilot license. Once you get to the stage and you pass you should be really proud of yourself. Some of the privileges of this airline transfer pilot license is that you can actually fly as a captain on an aircraft that requires minimum of two pilots. You can also exercise the other lower privileges from the other lower licenses such as you can also be a first officer or you can just fly as a commercial pilot or as a private pilot. So with any type of higher license automatically grants you the privileges of the lower licenses. In order to obtain this license you 
must do some exams. In this case, it's two exams you have to pass, and these are the two toughest exams in your piloting career. The first exam is known as the Seron exam, and the second is the Samra exam. Now, once you have an ATPL license, it does not end there. Uh, like anything in aviation, there's always more learning to do and more licenses and ratings to obtain. With an ATPL license, yes, you can fly as the captain on an airplane, but each manufacturer has their own complex training that you have to go through. And those are known as type ratings. So for example, if you fly an Airbus, you need an Airbus type rating. If you fly a Boeing, you need a Boeing type rating. So anytime you fly one of those type of aircraft, you get one of those type ratings in your license. So hopefully I made this clear to you. Now you see the full circle picture of flight training and pilot licensing in Canada. You must start off with your student pilot permit, move up from there to your first license, which is your private pilot license. Then you have your night rating, your commercial pilot's license next, your multi-engine rating, and your instructor rating if you choose. If you do not want that, then you can become an airline transport pilot. If you're somewhere in between your commercial and your ATPL, that's when you need to get the IATRA exam. And once you do all of those things, it still doesn't end there because when you get hired for a company to fly either a Boeing or an Airbus or an Embraer, you must do the type rating specific program for that. And then that gets added on to your license. Hopefully you enjoyed this video once again. You know, it's a long one. Uh, thank you for sticking it through the end. If you watch this entire video, please comment below the words, yes, I did. And that way I know you watched the whole video and I will see you next time.